The most powerful armor set in God of War Ragnarok can become even stronger with a proper setup. I wanted to cover a build that can truly master time manipulation and have it ready almost on demand. Well, we don't just have that, but also a build that gets a massive boost to damage while under this effect, resulting in what I believe to be the strongest build right now in God of War Ragnarok. If you enjoyed this video, a sub on the channel would be awesome and let's get started with the setup. Now this build excels in slowing down time at almost every turn. Between the armor, weapon attachments, the relic and the various enchantments, we'll have several ways to slow time very often in fights, get more damage during this effect and then quickly regain the cooldown that we just used. And just repeat this all over again. This also turns arguably one of the best skills, the Furious Simulation and the Glacial Permafrost, into abilities that themselves can also stop time. Now it all starts with the Berserkers and armor is what brings this whole build together with 3 separate buffs that contribute to more damage and the cooldown regen. The chest piece gives you the Soulless Warrior, whenever you use a relic, it massively increases your melee damage at the cost of receiving more damage yourself. But the wrist and the waist are the ones dealing with the whole cooldown restoration, and the wrist has a low luck chance for hits to cause a soul explosion, which deals damage and restores a portion of your cooldown on the relic. Meanwhile, the waist has pretty much the same effect, except the effect triggers when blocking, parrying, or when taking damage and the chance is a bit higher. And this is basically what makes the build so much powerful. It's basically all about popping off slow time, unleashing the max damage, and then building up the cooldown again so that you can trigger the relic immediately after. This is the reason why we're using high amounts of luck and cooldown. We want the soul explosion to trigger as often as possible, but the cooldown is also a stat that we can use to scale up our melee damage even more. In terms of the weapons, we have a few attachments and all of them deal with the realm shift and slowing down the time further. One of them is the grip of the 9 realms for your Leviathan X and this will cause a realm shift for around 1.8 seconds to pop anytime you turn on your Glacial Permafrost. You get it by the way from the Berserker fights in the Forbidden Sands right here in Alfheim, but it's basically the equivalent of the pommels of the 9 realms that we used for the other weapon. In fact, all weapons, including the shields, have their own versions of the Nine Realms variant to slow time on their respective skill usage. For the axe, it's really insane just how good it is, not only because you can generate permafrost rapidly and probably faster than any other weapon, but the Glacial Rake and the Breach are all around amazing at dealing damage as it is. So once you do this and pop the round shift and use them again, you get that back but you also deal increasingly higher damage. The pommels for the blade are the ones that we talked about previously, also from another Berserker encounter this time around in Vanaheim, very close to this pilgrim landing area right here. A big advantage of these skills is the fact that they also interrupt enemy attacks, including the charged and the red ones, so you can effectively use this to like just interrupt them, then pop the slow time and further deal more damage and build up the replenish on the relic again. We can't of course talk about weapons without also including the shield and there's one option for it called the Round of the Nine Realms. You do have to finish the favor called for Vanaheim when first reaching the crater. It's kind of like the main story so to speak in that location so totally worth doing. This one further provides a third way to slow down time which is going to happen whenever you parry or block. And I already made my case why I think the Dauntless Shield is by far the best even on the higher difficulties but you can totally go with a different one with no issue if you want that. I just prefer this one for the quick parries. In terms of enchantments, I know I keep saying bonus damage and the reason I'm saying that is because there's one particular enchantment that I didn't cover before, which is the Emblem of the Nine Realms. This further buffs melee damage during realm shifts and yes, this includes both the relic and the weapon triggers with the previous two attachments. You are kind of losing a set bonus from one of the enchantment sets, but in my opinion it's totally worth it as the bonus damage totally makes up for that and furthermore it stacks with the bonus from the chest piece in terms of additional damage during the relic usage. I get this by the way alongside the relic that we just covered at the end of a boss fight during the main story so you really cannot miss these. For some of the other enchantment options we have the Asgard set, this is going to make your weapon triangle attacks to do more damage and also scales with your cooldown which is awesome. As I've said previously we are going to use the cooldown to further scale up our weapon damage. 
You get this, by the way, from Remnants of Asgard as one of the end game activities once you finish the main story. So for that, you can check the video before this. And obviously, the Muspelheim set, I talked about this before, how good it is at further buffing the weapon gauge buffs. So you really don't want to miss these from the Muspelheim final trials. And by the way, if you happen to have multiple of them outside of just three, I totally suggest to go with all of them that provide extra cooldown and extra luck so we can get the soul eruption a lot more often. Now, the overall strategy, including when fighting Berserkers, like the King in this case that I'm fighting on the No Mercy difficulty, is to pop a few strong attacks until you build around half of the gauge and then quickly activate the Slow Time Relic. The reason for that is because you really don't want to waste too many shots here that could otherwise regen the Relic, so pop that off early. During those 6 or so seconds you have under the effect, you will likely get at least a few soul explosions to give you an additional chunk of relic regen back, plus enough weapon gauge to further trigger another almost 2 second with the weapon at the end of that duration for more slowdown time. From this point on, what I like doing is using that Dauntless Shield. There's just so many attacks in their patterns that can be easily, well, in this case, interrupted with a proper parry, even the ranged ones. You just have to get the timing right and it's a matter of practicing and like just fighting them over and over again. At the point that you might not even get any damage on you if you do this right. So like a lot of attacks over there that are telegraphed, but you might also want to interrupt them when they jump up into the air, maybe throw an attack, otherwise you might risk getting one-shotted by one of its abilities. Now, if you want to get the armor and are convinced you want it, you can actually like get most of it before even finishing the main story and let alone the entire track for the Berserkers. So you get the chest piece from the barons in Alfheim, the boss fight right here, which is basically made out of the main enemy plus two adds, and I highly suggest taking down the adds first, as they are way more annoying than the main fight. The waste guard, you get it from the berserker in Midgard, south of Tyr's temple, quite soon after finishing a main story over there the second time you visit, so you will want to get this. But the wrist armor is the one you get only after the main story from the mist fields in Niflheim, for me, the area over here only unlocked after speeding to Ratatosker after the main story was done, so he opened up a travel point here and I was able to take down the Berserker in the area. By the way, I totally did it with a poison build, so if you want to see that build too, let me know down below in the comments. And finally, if you want to finish the entire Berserker track and eventually beat the King, there is one final item that you will get, which is the Hilt of Skofnung that we talked about in yesterday's video. This is one absolutely crazy item, it's just a shame that it drops after literally being done with the most difficult challenge in the entire game, but totally a great option for New Game Plus whenever it might hit. This one summons 12 swords that will just jump around, deal damage to all the enemies around, or if there is only one enemy, they will just start group attacking it and overwhelming it with interrupts and high damage. To the point that eventually they also explode, and I mean, it's just an overall crazy ability to have. This is pretty much it with the build. Let me know down below what you think about it. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.